The fourth pillar is vitally important because without it the first three pillars do not work. The fourth pillar is an honest, committed, technically competent, visionary government leadership. Unless you have that, it just won't happen. You need to have a visionary and competent, but most importantly, an honest leadership. And, uh, and, and, and again, one can look at China, for instance, and also for that matter, Korea. If you look at the quality of the cabinet ministers that these countries have, they are top class scientists and engineers who are now in the cabinet, both of uh, China and Korea. And uh, the result is before you. Never before in the history of mankind have so many people been transformed so quickly, over a billion population in China, just in a matter of a couple of decades, because of the emphasis on education, on science and technology, and a determination that they could do it, not relying on foreign aid and foreign assistance, which usually comes with strings and which uh, do not help you, but a, a passionate zeal to transform the country, emanating from the leaders and permeating right down to the common person. And this is then uh, and, and paths to follow. So there is a process through which these mechanisms can be developed, these mechanisms for progress. And this is known as technology foresight. Technology foresight is a standard a laid down process through which countries can develop their own roadmaps for, d for socio-economic development. When I was in the cabinet and later when I was the federal minister and chairman of the Higher Education Commission, I raised a question and at that time uh, Mr. Jamali was the Prime Minister that where is Pakistan going? In 20 years time will we be building ships or will we be a world leader in pharmaceuticals manufacture or in computer chips or what? Where are we going? What is the long term roadmap? Is there a vision, a strategy, an action plan? We are caught up in day to day affairs worrying about uh, the price of sugar and other things of course which are important and we should be looking at but besides that we should there are uh, we should be looking at have a long term strategy and here we need to get the opposition also together so that uh, every four years or five years we don't go around in circles and every time the new government says comes in they say whatever has happened in the previous government was nonsense and we should start all over again an example of this is uh, in the UK, for instance, where the shadow cabinet from the opposition and the current cabinet ministers have a behind-the-scenes understanding on critically important issues, that these are key issues on which we agree, which require long-term policies, and here we will, once we agree on what those should be, we will not def uh, move, differ from them, we will continue on, on those policies. So there has to be a long-term strategic, strategic uh, roadmap for Pakistan. So the cabinet asked me, okay, you lead this effort, can you do it? And I said, well, I can try. And uh, so we identified 13 different sectors uh, of our economy where knowledge play a, could play a key role in this process of socio-economic development. They included such areas as engineering or pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, agriculture, telecommunications, information technology, and others. And in each of these sectors, we uh, identified the best experts in the country. And we gathered them together. Uh, and we also identified the best experts abroad, Pakistani experts abroad, uh, diaspora. And I, I basically said I want five questions answered. One, which projects? Identify specific projects. I don't want a beautiful piece of English literature comes out which is all full of sound and fury and signifying nothing. I want a very crisp, clear roadmap for development. So first is which projects? Second is which institution should be involved in the implementation of the, the project? Third is what time frame? Fourth is what cost? How much money? 
and this should be realistic taking into account our current budget and how much money we can set aside for this whole program extending across all sectors it was not just science or education it was covering all national sectors and fifth is the internal rate of return IRR what will be the impact on national economy if we put in investments in this at this level how long will it take uh, for it to be recovered and start producing results so these were the key questions that I, I asked and uh, I got a group of 12 PhDs in economics to lead this effort. Why did I do that? Because we scientists often are airy-fairy in our ways. We have our heads up in the sky, but our feet often not planted on the grounds. So I said, well, these economists will help us uh, in doing the inter -sea priorities. Should we this pro do this project in biotechnology, or should we do this in agriculture, or should we this do this in IT? According to certain, uh, certain tests in terms of the internal rate of return, in terms of poverty alleviation, in terms of affecting the common man, in terms of the whole process of development, which is the best way forward to do this uh, uh, project and what of course are the human resource requirements for this and that's where the Higher Education Commission and its programs came in, that they need to be tailored towards a road, road map. And this took about two, two and a half years to do, we, got, we, we had all the governments the provincial governments uh, also uh, intensively consulted on this uh, and uh, after consulting several thousand people uh, we uh, and I was assisted by Dr. S.T.K. Naeem who was at Comstech at the time and by uh, other people later who were involved in different uh, aspects of the programs to come forward with this roadmap. This was approved on the 1st of August 2007 when Mr. Shaukat Aziz was the Prime Minister. It was approved by the Cabinet. It was a 15-year roadmap broken down into three five-year phases, five-year, 10-year, and 15-year. And an inter-ministerial committee was formed uh, for its implementation. That was 1st August 2007. Nothing has happened since. And because that was the work of done under, under a previous government, and this, alas, is the is the malady that we suffer from. But in any case, uh, the document exists and I hope that at some uh, point of time, I called it a draft because things are changing and uh, it, it was not etched in stone and I said that we de are deliberately calling it a draft because technologies change with every passing day, with every passing e month and every passing year. So it has to be constantly upgraded and revised as things change and as the uh, niche opportunities that our countries face has today may change uh, in, in a couple of years. So this needs to be done regularly and repeated regularly. Uh, and I think this is time that we not only looked at it, it again, but also uh, uh, started implementing different uh, pieces of that roadmap. Uh, but we need to also get the opposition parties uh, together in place. Uh, to support this effort so that we don't uh, reverse our gears after the next few years.